Well, hello and welcome to another exciting episode here on MI Gardener. Now, you might notice something different. I'm here with my worm bins. Yep, bins. I have three now. And it's not because I actually went and bought more worms. It's because Uncle Jim's worm farm actually decided to give me more worms because uh, some of my worms had died. Now, it wasn't that they had died because of anything with me. They have a 100% uh, you know, li uh, live worm policy, basically, that if any of your worms die, or not any, I mean, you know, if a substantial amount die uh, in transit to your house, they will refund not only your entire offer, but they will replace your original offer as well. So it's like, I didn't even need that many worms, but they are so, um, they're so confident about their product that they not only filled the rest of my order that died, but they actually gave me a whole new offer is, or a whole new order as well. So it was like, I have, I mean, good heavens, I got probably 15,000 worms here and I really do not need that many at all. So uh, yeah, so I made three bins and each of them has about 5,000 worms in them. And um, it was like, holy cow, I could probably even make four bins, but I just decided that would be way overkill for now. Um, but I, actually ran into some things that I wanted to note and bring you guys along for because I think it's so beneficial. The bedding material that I had chosen for this green bin, this green bin here, was a pH balanced uh, sphagnum peat moss. And I used a uh, one to one ratio of sphagnum peat moss to outdoor compost. This, this bin is working so phenomenally. It's, I mean, this bin is really, working i mean the whole bin is literally almost already composted i'm not even kidding you um there are uh the the worms that composted the the actual sphagnum peat moss mixture and then they also composted the food inside and i have been feeding them but um this bed it could literally be already harvested after two and a half weeks and i was blown away i dug through there there is not one ounce of sphagnum peat moss left it's all worm castings and i'll show you guys up close um but um but these two red bins here, I had run out of comp or uh, I'd run out of compost and sphagnum peat moss mix. So I went to the store and I bought something called Bacto, and it's a local brand that actually sells in Michigan, and it's really popular around here. I'm not sure if you guys have it, but um, nonetheless, um, yeah, my furnace likes to make noises. Uh, <laughs> we always say there's a monster in there, so if you hear that, that's just my my furnace. Uh, but um, the two red bins had something called Bacto in them. And Bacto is a sphagnum peat moss that is actually uh, from Michigan. It's from kind of the thumb area. Um, so they have a different makeup of sphagnum peat moss. And some sphagnum peat moss can be pH balanced, some can be extremely acidic. Um, but little did I know, I bought non-pH balanced sphagnum peat moss and that basically means that it's in its natural form it hasn't been amended with any lime or uh you know or or uh other soil to kind of balance out the ph make it around seven which is neutral ph and that's that's what you want for an optimal worm bed bit uh a worm bed bedding material um but i had the non-ph balanced uh bacto sphagnum peat moss and it's great stuff don't get me wrong but for a worm bin it was way too acidic way 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 too acidic and i found that the worms were actually trying to evacuate the the bin they were crawling up the sides and i felt terrible because i've been torturing them the whole time and it just dawned on me i i've been like trying to figure out why uh because generally like i had noted in the first episode um you know they'll, they'll crawl out sometimes they'll crawl up the edge sometimes because they're not used to their environment um, but little did I know after two weeks, it wasn't the fact that they weren't used to their environment. It was the fact that they were trying to escape this really high pH environment. And it wasn't that they were dying. It's just that they weren't comfortable at all. So they were trying to escape and they were all kind of cluster on the edges. And it was really, uh, you know, horrible to see. So I solved the problem and I want to show you how I solved the problem. So that if you come across this error, hopefully you'll have corrected it before this happens. But if you don't, there's a really simple fix. 
and I took a pH meter and I stuck it into the soil and I found that the pH was around 4.7. That is extremely far too acidic. Uh, composting worms don't like their acidity level to be any lower than 5.5. Uh, so any lower than 5.5 and they're gonna feel very uncomfortable. This bed right here, the green bin, tested it, it's at 7.1. It's perfect, like you could not ask for a better pH for a worm bin. So you have 4.7 and 7.1. I basically took the two red bins and I mixed up a couple cups of uh, fireplace ash. We have a fireplace upstairs. I just took some ash, some wood ash, put it in the water and let it set for about 20 minutes to leach out the pH, because uh, wood ash is really alkaline. It has a pH of about 9.5. So it's really, really alkaline. If you put worms in that, it would kill them. But I took out the, uh, the pH, I extracted the pH, uh, the alkalinity from the wood ash, and I basically watered the beds with the wood ash water. And then I tested it again, and it was perfect. It was at about 5.6 for their pH. Some a little bit lower, some a little bit higher in different places, obviously. But in time, it's all going to mix around, and the worms are going to be a lot more comfortable in that. And this just goes to show you that um, you don't have to panic and throw out your, your bedding. You can dilute the, the bedding material with something that has uh, a higher pH. If you have lime available, lime works great. You just sprinkle some lime in there, mix it in with the, the worm uh, bedding material, and they're going to do fine. Um, it, it, uh, it seems to be working great now. I don't have any more climbing up the edges. They seem to be composting the food that I'm giving them and they actually seem to be staying in the bedding material for once, which is a great sign. So I'm gonna bring you in close so you can see the worm bins, kind of an update. I'm gonna show you this green bin because I'm so proud of it, um, but I'll also show you the red bins and kind of show you what I did with those as well because um, I, I think it's really important to highlight the mistakes and the successes. So in this little project, I actually have both. All right, so the red bins are the ones we're gonna start with because I wanna start and kind of end on a good note here. Um, I mean, this is a good note, I fixed it, but I just feel like this was where my mistake started. So this was my worm bin that uh, I actually amended with some, some wood ash, and you really can't even see it because the water is what uh, kind of fixed the pH problem. So you really don't see any wood ash in here. Um, but in this bin, I'll show you, you can actually see the wood ash. I, I uh, spread the rest of the water on here, and it's kind of got this kind of cloudy white uh, material here, but the pH is fixed. It's around 5.6, 5.7, so it's really key uh, that you have that type of pH, like I said, and it's fixed. You don't see any more worms kind of trying to crawl up the edges there. They're, uh, they're totally fine. To see what they were doing is they were actually crawling up here and trying to escape, and they were all clumped up there, and that was, that was terrible to see, so I'm glad to see that they're not doing that anymore. Um, here, like I said, you know, nothing going on that's uh, notable. You know, they were again up here and up here trying to escape, but I don't see any more climbing up, so that's a great sign. They're down there just getting happy with their environment again. Now, if I come over here, this bin is awesome. Oh my gosh, has this been great. I'm so happy with this bin. There's a few little bits of, you know, uncompostable junk, but other than that, you dig down here, you got lots of worms, but look at this material. Focus, focus, come on. This material is completely broken down. There is no more, uh, you know, there's no more peat moss in here. The peat moss is completely broken down and it's all worm castings already. Um, you know, I'm just so shocked because the peat moss actually looked like this. This is a little bit of peat moss that's left. You know, this is, this is what the peat moss looked like. This great, this uh, kind of, brown, uh, you know, clumpy material here. And you can see a notable difference from the peat moss to the worm castings. And um, if I dig down here, I can even tell you there's no, there's no peat moss down here either. Uh, maybe just even a little bit, just a little bit down at the very bottom there, but it's great stuff. This stuff could be sifted out right now even. And I might do that. I might restart my worm bin and uh, sift all this out. Um, but I think I'm gonna wait about a week or two, and um, I think it's gonna be great. I think this is going to uh, be very beneficial for the garden. Well, I know it's gonna be beneficial for the garden. I think this is gonna be uh, very beneficial for starting my onion starts in, which I'll be doing very soon. 
Ah, oh, it's great stuff. I wish you had smell vision Oh, that smells so good. All right, so thank you so much for coming along with me and enjoying this wonderful episode. I will have another episode for you come Monday, but uh, I was enjoying my, my birthday. So I'm going to get the lids back on these. Thank you all for coming along with me, and uh, hopefully you'll start your worm bin of your own. Because I really am telling you what, there is nothing more fun than uh, growing your own worms. So I will talk to you all later. This is in my garden reminding you to grow big or go home. Catch you all later. See ya. Bye. All right, nighty-night worms.